We're back. I'm here with John Sebastian. Hey, thanks a lot. That was a, that was great. Really well, enjoyed that. It's fun to be back on your show. Thanks. All right. Well, let's see. I, that's right. You helped us out before, but uh, this is right. you all out. Jug music. The Jug Band, yes, the J Band. And you've been into, uh, you, weren't you getting into Jug music back with the Spoonfuls? Were you guys getting into it then? You know, it's funny, the same thing has happened with this band that happened with the Spoonful. We started out saying, okay, we're going to play the Jug Band Bible. There's 30 tunes or so, and, mm -hmm. and those were what we were going to do. Well, sure enough, you know, you start to run out of material real fast, uh -huh. and so you start to struggle, and uh, Jimmy and I, uh, of course, I... I, I know that your listeners don't all know that uh, Jimmy was in my band before he was in your band. Stolen away, that's right. <laughs> it's true, it's true. So, uh, you know, that's right. So he and I have started writing songs, and, and the thing kind of uh, did the same thing. Uh, it, it's, it's become sort of a hybrid now. Now, what is jug music? I mean, where does it come from? Is it, it's, it's, a, it's an American tradition? I mean, yes, what are we talking is. about? It really, it really came about during the industrial period in the United States, the first time that large quantities of people would be uh, in the same factory making cigarettes or mm -hmm. making, uh, uh, you know, for Raleigh Durham was was a place uh, in Memphis. Um, they sort of grew up spontaneously around the fact that a number of blues yeah. men would come to town, and it was easier to work as a group than it was getting hired as single blues mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. and so these bands were very often slightly loose in nature they were they were not really that kind of um highly tuned machine that like bluegrass bands sure. uh, evolved into it was a kind of a loose form but the uh now the, is the jug itself i was surprised because i i you know the only place i'd seen someone use a jug before was that hillbilly band at disneyland you know that one of those, yeah. one of those bears is using a jug and i was wondering That's like right. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm talking about? And I always was wondering, like, is that something, you know, sometimes you have this, like, cartoon image of, of people using a jug, but it's actually a real instrument. It's it, actually, it really is, is it doing well, the bass lines, It's a real or? instrument in the hands of Fritz Richmond, who uh, is our jug player. There is, really, I don't know, uh, that many people nowadays make it sound that good. Uh, yeah. But it is, No, he's really, he's doing a lot. It's actually, I was, uh, and, and I, I came by and I was watching you guys in rehearsal a couple hours ago, and... I was really listening close, and he's, he's, uh, I was wondering, what is it exactly? Is, is he laying down bass notes, or? He is laying down notes, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's great. He That's plays really cool. in tune. It's a, re it's a revelation. Yeah. It really is. So, and he plays wash tub just as good. <laughs> now, is it just a common jug he's using, or do you need, like, a, do you need just a special jug and a special wash tub? Really, Fritz should be telling you this, because oh, okay. he can do, like, two hours on this, but, but it is essentially a ceramic jug. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Um, I've seen him play everything from uh, Clorox bottles, uh, right. <laughs> you know, to, to antiques. He just goes to the junkyard and comes away with a whole orchestra. That's, that's right. That's really impressive. Yeah, this is, uh, I know that just something I wanted to talk to you about very quickly was uh, Woodstock. I know you were at Woodstock. Yes, you know, w w w Way back when. Now, what did you actually perform at, at, at Woodstock? Did, was you playing jug music then? or? I played by myself. Mm -hmm. I had basically just kind of uh, gone on my own for my first year and uh, had been playing little clubs and you know mm -hmm. 100 people at a time and then there was Woodstock. So. Now that was that do you have a, a distinct memory of that or does that just seem like a dream the whole thing? No I, I remember it uh, very well it was the most exciting performance as far as an audience that I'd ever been yeah. part of. Yeah. Yes, it was fabulous. Yeah. No, I, just, I think for people of my generation we don't exactly when we've seen the pictures I've seen the films and I just sometimes you know, I, I, I look at that and I wonder, what did it really feel like to be there? Was it just a, a surreal experience? Well, there were, there were sort of misinterpretations at the time. The, uh, the media was saying, hey, it's, it's mud, it's drugs, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, squalor. And uh, I remember for the first few days I went on talk shows and explained, no, we're having a good time. That, that's really... Right, that's know, all it is. Well, but you were still covered with mud. It was an accident. So no one... <laughs> Though this is the thing that, that's, hard to, that's hard to focus on nowadays is that, that it was an accident. The right. fact that those... I was standing next to the two guys that, that put on that show. The moment that somebody comes up and says, uh, the fence just went down in the fourth quadrant. Right. You know, and the two guys looked at each other, and finally the one guy says, I guess it's a free festival. 
<laughs> and and it was at that point that the that the festival became well, a magical experience. That doesn't happen anymore, I don't think. It's a uh, bygone era. Yeah, but, uh, but, but I'm going to be real happy uh, to get ten times my normal fee and play all summer <laughs> for anybody that wants to relive the experience. All right. Well, listen. Thank you. Really, thank you very much for coming. It's a real treat to have you here. Thanks a lot. Okay, we're going to be right back. We'll see you in just a moment. Not Sebastian.